Hey guys, welcome to episode six. Thank you, Chick Fick Teal Pointer. On the Bajo Quinto, we are working on the playlist is up there. It's exciting. It is, I swear, it talks about the instrument, it talks about um, what you're going to need to put together basically to fix the instrument. Our friend Manuel Ayala uh, talked about everything Bajo Quinto, the music, the history, the traditions, the builders and the artists. And then we went into figuring out what do we need to take off this thing? How much of the original equipment is going to go away? What needs to be fixed? What we're going to have to add? What is going to happen to the tonal quality, how much of the original instrument will remain. We've developed a great deal of respect for the builder, uh, the Paracho Mexico builders, who some of them are very advanced, some of them just build guitars with what they have, and they're utilitarian guitars, and that's what this one was. Um, the last time we took a look at what's going to take to fix the sunken top, and we've got everything in order now. We're going to get out our steamer and get out our body presses and the things that we've made in other episodes. By the way, there's a playlist up there for both the Bajo Quinto and there's a minimal amount of time. Hey, look at this 1918 Gibson mandolin I'm working on. Enough time has passed, but there's a a playlist up there about templates and tells you how to make body presses and neck removal jigs and stuff because one of the things you have to consider is how much is this going to cost what's the likelihood of success is the instrument worth it how many hours you're going to have in it would you do this work for hire and so kinds of things so um we are going to discuss uh the tools what the approach is the likelihood of success and I think the important thing to keep in mind as you watch through this is you're going to be see some things being done and you're going to wonder sometimes if things aren't actually getting worse before they get better so I've warned you the shirt means we're going into heavy surgery and I think what you need to watch out for as we go along here is it's going to become pretty clear that some things are going to get worse before they get better because when you pull something back into shape radically something else is going to happen and it's going to take you down another path and there may not be any light at the end of the tunnel enjoy yourself relax and have fun while you watch me struggle because that's what y'all do let's hit the bench okay guys let's pick up where we left off in the last episode you'll remember that we laid a bunch of painters tape across here and used a magic marker to trace out the edge of this binding here or this curving it is all hand carved piece by piece so I want to retain that rather than tearing it out and pulling the sides off we already have enough structural problems but what we did then is we took this 16th inch mahogany which we are going to by the way use to reinforce this but we need to get this back level again because it's sagging really bad but we took these pieces and laid them on a thick piece of three quarter inch plywood and no that's not what you think it is or is supposed to be but we put this in here like so and this gives us something to press against so what this episode is going to be about is i'm going to show you how to steam this top back into place using the stuff we've made and to further complicate things we cannot mess with the sides because they're already blowing out so we're going to focus on just getting the top flat now in a few episodes back right up there right about now is and if, and if it's shown the wrong way just click where it comes in I don't know if it's there or there because things are backwards I'm used to looking I think it's up there anyway 
I made this body press, and I call it a body press because it is kind of the same thing as a neck removal jig, but it fits the whole body. So it's got this on here. These are T-nuts. Um, look for that episode. But what this is going to do is it's going to give us a base to press against something but it's not going to be the size of the guitar. So let me show you how we're going to set this up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put the bottom of the body press in place. Notice that this has lats to get it up off the table. And it has this thing that comes in handy for pushing a neck off. But we can use that to adjust the height on this. But I'm going to put this piece of wood down here and this is going to help us get everything up out of the way and this piece of heavy oak back here we want to keep our clamping areas there and back here clear now what we are going to want to do is put some of these blocks in place here because we are going to want to get the body of the guitar up and away from the sides. So if we can see those once they go inside and on top of this are taller than the sides which are going to go here without knocking the camera off. So I think the best way to do this really is to do it upside down because it's going to be easier for you to understand. I already know what's happening so we'll just do it the other way so you can see what the deal is. So here's the guitar. It has a neck and a sound hole. When I built this jig, I use a dreadnought guitar. And so this will house the neck. You see that? So now I'm going to flip this over like so. And then what happens is... I hit the camera with everything. The camera gets bumped, don't worry about it. So that's going to sit there like that. Then this, we'll go this side down right here. Notice we are not putting the veneer pieces in yet. Then these will stack here like so. And I'm going to use four of them. These were all cut to be the same height. Like so. We want to push down on this equally all over the place. You see that, right? Then we take the bottom of the jig and line it up like so. And we're going to take a piece of wood that we can adjust this to right here like so. Can you see that? And then we can adjust this to make sure everything is level. We don't want this tilted one way or another. I can even put a level on top to make sure everything is okay. And then we have these which actually go in this way. They go into the T-knot there, which holds it. And then the wing knot, this part goes into the T-knot. There is a piece of tubing on here so the sides of the guitar don't, don't get beat up when you're using this thing. But then this adjusts down, this comes off, slips up into here. So let me put this together and I'll catch up with okay, you. While this is upside down, 
I want you to pay attention to right here. When I'm running the bolt up through into the T-knot, I want to stop when it surfaces right there. Do you see that? See that right there? And then there's a wing knot on the underside of that that I'm tightening up. So all of them, when they're in place, that wing knot at the bottom needs to stop everything from turning because we're going to tighten this and level it with the wing nut on top and you'll see here in a minute. Okay, so let's start off adjusting these. We know that the back part here was okay. So we're just gonna get these, remember you adjust this. This is just this part right here is for winding things down when you're setting up to get to those T-nuts. And these are just slotted right here. So we get these where they're just a little bit loose like so and you got to remember your bottom wing knots need to be tight but we just slack these off until they're just a tad loose like so and then get a couple turns on them because we're not trying to adjust anything if this is too tight here in the back when we bring this forward it's going to want to pull all this up this can just stay right where it's at. Then we're going to want to center the guitar up a little bit. The neck pocket does that for us. And then before we really start cranking down on this, we're not trying to fix that gap right there. Let's use um, closed pins for the unit of measurement here. We are actually, that's about how much the neck is going to, going to want to come up. So we'll loosen this up just a little bit. So we got plenty of gap here. I'm looking at a big crack on the side of the guitar. I'm not really worried about that because it's not under pressure. I can move this all day long. But what I do want to do is I want to get these clothes pins in that gap between that piece of wood that we put in there for A clamping coil and the top of the guitar because that is where I want to inject the steam and that gives us a little gap once that gap closes up we'll know we're getting close and that will happen when these things underneath those blocks press everything together using these to be tightened down. So let's set up the steamer. Okay, this people is a cappuccino maker. It has a reservoir. It has a steam function that works right here. So there's brew, off, and steam. It has a steam hose or something or other. And you just put a piece of vacuum tubing and a basketball inflator needle. That's the extent of it. You want something that's going to keep your hands protected. But once the steam comes out, we're just going to put that needle in that gap right there and blow steam into this puppy. Let's plug this in. Remember, safety last. Okay, there it is, guys. That is steam. And you can tell that we're going to put that in that gap right there. There it is. And we're going to let that run. And you can see it coming out here everywhere. Now, I want you to use your head. Why did I pull the bracing off the part of the guitar where I'm steaming it? Well, because the steam would have taken the glue and melted it, so all the bracing would have come off anyway. So that's kind of what's going on. We're just going to let this boil a little bit, and then we're going to put a couple clamps here and here through the sound hole, and then we're going to crank this puppy down, and we're going to leave it sit. 
that's what's going on. This guitar side is torn. I'm a little late. This never turned into something real. Well, we'll see, won't we? Okay, guys, you can tell where the steam is going because it feels hot. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Ah. Thank you. I love you as an apprentice. Chick Flick, Teal Pointer, Junior. Yo, Daddy is still in the shed in Afton. You got the easy life in Malibu, son. Got to push that stick. There we go. Watch it because these things will siphon and get everything that you don't want wet. Wet. All right. Now we're going to pull out our clothespins because without those being gone, that will not seal up. There we go. Now we can start tightening this up and get the back ones in place. Not super tight, but what ends up happening is when I tighten these up, it's going to press everything down into that blocking that's underneath there. So. I'm going to be able to tell what's happening when this gap right here starts to seal up. Can you see this? There's one on each side. And then finally, I will be able to put a couple of small clamps right here. And that will bring everything up into place. Now, if I would have put the sides on the bottom of the clamp or the body press, we would have had a terrible, terrible problem. Ooh, I can hear something popping. That's almost gone. is about as tight as we are going to get. Okay, we've fished one of these deep-throated clamps back into here. We've got a softener there, so we're going to tighten that one up. And then we're going to take one that's just a little bit shallower and pop it right here. And as that comes up, there shouldn't be a gap in between the clamping call or here. See, that one's got to come up just a little bit more. Remember, there is a piece of cork paper underneath here that's about a sixteenth of an inch. So that isn't going to come up anymore. So we're getting really close. Once these are fully tight, then we should be able to do a final adjustment here and leave it sit. There we go. Time to wait for steam to dry. All right, what do y'all think now? 
yeah I'll be your guitar plastic surgeon that's for sure and the only perfumey stuff we're using on my channel is steam so what do we learn well the guitar is responding the top is responding so are the sides and maybe not in a way that we might want them to so I'm going to close this one out the next time we're going to have a look at what happened to the side that side the one side is really what gave up the ghost in the first place that made this guitar useless and that's what sent me down the rabbit trail get ready for some surprises and maybe a point or two of desperation i'll see you next time don't forget the playlist is up there give me a subscribe and a like and i will see you soon